Hi guys, welcome to uh, QNAP Live Broadcast. I'm Sam, the host for the topic today. Mm -hmm. And before we start everything, please look at the live.qnap.com, the IP address, which is our new broadcast website. Uh, from now on, we will put our live broadcast and uh, previous broadcasting uh, onto the live.qnap.com, so you can go and check for all of our video up there. And the advantage is that we will put the PowerPoint slide on the right hand side of each of the videos and you can just click to each slide and uh, the video will be led to the corresponding time and you can just share to your friends if you need. And it's very easy and convenient for you to use, so we hope you like it. And today the topic is TS351, that is a new spec of our 3-bay NAS. So we have our PM Jason here. Hello everyone. So we will tell you what are the advantages and the features to the TS351. Mm -hmm. Also, we will show you some simple live demo to show you how to uh, install some of the expansion material. So let's get into the slides first. And uh, the feature to the TS351 are already written up there. It's a 3-bay NAS mm -hmm. with RAID 5. And uh, it has two M.2 PCM, uh, PCIe uh, Gen 2 by one and for what's special that is uh, MVME slots mm -hmm. so uh, the transmission speed will be faster than the SATA mm -hmm. right and then it has a dual core 2.41 uh, gigahertz of the CPU mm -hmm. it's a Celeron uh, CPU yes. right mm -hmm. so uh, the look are just as the same as our TS332X mm -hmm. and uh, 328 mm -hmm. but for what are the different is uh, mm -hmm. from from panel, there are more extra two LED indicators for the M.2. So uh, let's check on what are the special parts for this machine. Yeah, so here you will see a list of the three different uh, NAS models, Kinect NAS models based on the Intel dual core Celeron processors. So starting uh, with the first one will be the, on the left will be the TS351. Okay, this is a brand new one we are launching now. And uh, it has uh, Intel Celeron uh, codename Bay Trail, uh, Bay Trail Generation Processor uh, J1800. So it's a dual core. And you will see that uh, compared to the other NAS models, the frequency is much higher, which means uh, with a single core performance, it gives you much better performance when mm -hmm. you are running some of the tasks. So with this one, it's a two po starting at 2.41 gigahertz and can, can burst up to 2.58 gigahertz. And, uh, you will see that uh, uh, on the on the the other two on the right hand side, the TS two five one A is uh, based on the Intel's uh, Breswell, the Celeron N thirty sixty processor, and then the rightmost one is the TS two five one B, which uh, was recently launched. It has uh, Intel uh, J thirty three fifty five based on the upper rack generation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so with a uh, the dual core 2 gigahertz up to 2.5 mm -hmm. and uh, the reason why we choose the TS351 with the J1800 is because uh, the processor uh, you know even though it's launched in uh, 2013 but uh, it's been through uh, many uh, tests in the market with many uh, you will see that there are many uh, computer motherboards and uh, computers and even industrial products based on this processor mm -hmm. so it is uh, it means uh, this is a very stable processor with a long-term support. Mm -hmm. So that's why uh, we decided to go with the TS351 the, the with the J1800 processor to give it the best value. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, this one, this page shows you uh, how the components are being made, uh, connected. So starting, if you look at the right-hand side, uh, there's a HDMI 1.4a to give you the 1080p full HD resolution, the HDMI output, okay? And then uh, on this model, we also give you a analog audio line out so you can connect uh, the audio cable mm -hmm. uh, to your amplifier to listen to the music, okay? And then uh, for the hard drives, uh, since the TS351 is a, is a three-bay model, so you will see that uh, the first two hard drives, uh, slot one and two, are from the native SATA ports, so it's a SATA 3 gigabit per second, which is uh, quite enough for the hard drives, you know, if you just install hard drive for the big capacity. And for the third hard drive uh, slot, it is uh, from the PCIe to uh, PCIe to SATA controller, so we use uh, ASM 1062, which is from the media company, to give you the 
hard, number three hard drive uh, slot to connect the third hard drive. And for the LAN port, uh, we use a uh, PCI to gigabit LAN port based on the Intel i211 uh, gigabit controller. And you will find this controller is often used in many of the uh, gaming motherboards, from such as uh, ASUS ROG, those kind of gaming motherboard to give you a very higher performance, also offload your CPU power, mm -hmm. okay, to give you more uh, better performance. Yes. And then uh, uh, on the, the two of the M.2 SSDs are directly from the PCI uh, channels. So you will see that each of the M.2 slot has a PCI Gen 2 by one up to 500 megabyte per second transfer speed. Yeah, okay, sure. So with that, you can install M.2 SSDs. Mm -hmm. okay. Now this one, uh, just uh, a further look at uh, from the front side, uh, what kind of uh, what kind of drives you can install? So uh, on the front, you will have access. You know, once you remove the cover, you have access to three of the 3.5 inch hard drives. Okay, mm -hmm. so you can easily make it the uh, RAID 5 configuration to give you a better pro protection yes. and also uh, increase performance of the RAID one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then uh, on the back of the NAS, there's also HDMI output for 1080p, so you can. I'll put it to your monitor or your TV for entertainment, or you can also output the virtual machine desktop to use with a USB keyboard and mouse. And then on the left hand side, uh, the hard, as I mentioned, is uh, based on Intel processor. Mm -hmm. So uh, thanks to the x86 architecture, uh, actually you can install more apps through our QNAP uh, building QTS app center, mm -hmm. and also the in the x86 is all good for multitasking when you run more apps at the same time. And here is the SSD, so I will, we'll talk about more about SSD features later. Okay. Sure. Now here are the three bay family uh, overview. So starting with the uh, left most one, this is a TS328. Okay, this is the base on, this is the entry level three bay NAS based on the Realtek quad core processor. So you get a, you get, you get a 1.4 gigahertz uh, quad core processing power and uh, for this model you can install three of the 3.5 inch hard drives uh, but if you want to install 2.5 inch SSDs right uh, by default it includes one of the adapter okay so you can use one of the three base to install SSD and if you want what if you want to install three SSDs uh, you can purchase the optional SSD adapter to install SSDs okay and now this model TS328 also gives you a uh, uh, transcoding power. So actually, with the hardware as the rate is transcoding, you can support up to 4K hardware transcoding with this TS328 device. Mm -hmm. And in the middle one, it is a good choice for the entry level SMBs and the work groups because uh, of the 10 gigabit built in. So with this model TS332X, uh, it comes with a, also a very powerful 64-bit uh, ARM processor. Uh, quad core 1.7 gigahertz and uh, you will see that uh, based on the 10 gigabit uh, performance you can read the uh, read performance up to 1000 megabyte per second so yes. it's a very fast uh, for your uh, small business data transfer mm -hmm. and then uh, this device also gives you extra okay extra m.2 sata ssd slots so you don't have to sacrifice your existing uh, three slots for the you can keep the three hard drive base and then you can add three additional M.2 SATA SSD to set up the QTL or SSD cache to enhance the 10 GB, 10 GB performance. Mm -hmm. And the rightmost one is the, T, the new TS351. So with the TS351 is based on Intel processor and you know with the Intel processor is known for the multimedia performance, right? Yes. So this one, uh, not only you get the three bay for the hard drives, but we also give you two additional M.2 uh, NVMe SSD slots uh, with a Gen 2 by 1 performance. So you can also expand uh, the capacity and performance with the additional SSDs. And uh, because of the uh, Intel processor, the 351 also gives you the HDMI output and also hardware transcoding. Yeah, okay. Sure. Now, uh, you may wonder. Uh, what's the performance like if I install an uh, NVMe SSD? We all know that uh, SSDs are very fast, right, compared to the SATA based SSDs. And in the market, uh, you will often see the Gen 3 by 4 uh, high performance SSDs. Uh, but because uh, those are high performance, so also more expensive. 
and also they generate more heat. So you will see more and more SSD vendors, they come out with the new Gen 3 by 2 NVMe SSDs. Mm -hmm. So performance is still quite good, uh, just a uh, uh, lower uh, heat generation and also lower prices. So you, it's uh, good to use those kind of SSDs on this model. So with a Gen 2 by 1 slot on each of the SSD slot here on the TS351, when we configure it's a RAID 1, here you will see the performance. Uh, you get uh, about uh, the write performance is about 328 megabyte per second, and then the read performance is about 689 megabyte per second. So yes. this is from the internal read and write. Okay, so this is useful. You know when by setting up the SSD cache or Q tier, it is useful for um, uh, enhance the performance of the uh, internal file. You know hard data, core data move when you set up Q tier, mm -hmm. or if you are accessing. You know, since the device has a one gigabit LAN port, you know, when you are transferring the many of the small files and you want the higher performance with the random uh, IOPS, then the SSD cache can really help. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So the next topic will be what we have often mm -hmm. mentioned, like why we will suggest you to choose the uh, 3 bay NAS for your RAID 5 demand, because we know that, uh, okay, of course, a 4-bay NAS compared to a 3-bay NAS, mm -hmm. the cost will be uh, definitely higher. Yeah, yeah. And if you just want to have your own RAID 5, mm -hmm. and 2-bay NAS cannot fulfill your needs. So uh, uh, let's take a 6 terabyte of your space uh, as our goal. If you want to make it on your 2-bay NAS, you will have to purchase two of the 6, bay, uh, six TB yeah, right. hard disk mm -hmm. and then make it RAID 1 and you will get a 50% of your hardy uh, partial. And if that is a RAID 5, you can prepare 3 of the 3 TB hard disk and you will also get a 6 TB in the end and uh, the hard disk utilization will be 67%. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, uh, the 6 terabyte hard disk, the price will be much more higher than the 3, bay not, uh, sorry, the three terabyte. So uh, you can go on your online shop and you can check the price and you will see that Choose a 3-bay NAS to make your own RAID 5. You will get the highest of your hard utilization par, uh, percent, percentage, and then you also might get the lowest price. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is why we suggest you. And uh, to choose our TS351, you not only get a 3-bay NAS for your hard disk, you also get two of the NVMe M.2 SSD slots for your another purpose. So uh, just to get the in, in, internal. Yeah, yeah, so that is a extra add-on. Mm -hmm. And let's check on the motherboard of our TS351. Mm -hmm. At the right hand, uh, the left, the, the left, the hand, left, hand, left hand side, side of the SSDs, okay. left side of your uh, your your NAS is your motherboard, mm -hmm. and you can see that we have two of the M.2 uh, 20, uh, 2280 PCIe Gen 2 by 1 NVMe SSD slots for two and that is tourless so uh, Jason will also show you how to install your SSD without mm -hmm. any screw and screwdriver and of course for the DDR3L the memory slots also is very easy to install we will also show you later mm -hmm. and uh, there's one thing to uh, announce for you to know that for our official release product there will be 2 gigabyte and 4 gigabyte mm -hmm. still and each of the skill you can upgrade into 8 gigabyte with two of the 4 gigabyte SSD. Yeah. Uh, sorry, the DDR3L. Yeah, we ship the memory with the one one DIMM, mm -hmm. so you can easily just install the second one to upgrade the memory. Yeah, yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now uh, this is just an example to show uh, how how you can set up the TS351 mm -hmm. for the best uh, investment. Yeah. Uh -huh. So here on the front, uh, you can set up the RAID 5 with uh, three of the 10 terabyte hard drives. That way, you get a 20 terabyte of uh, uh, big storage for mm -hmm. your code data. And then uh, on the SSD, you can set up as a RAID 1 with a high performance, you know, NVMe SSDs. And then uh, you can uh, use QT. That way, uh, you when you're accessing the data, you can sure always make sure the hard data is uh, gives you always uh, be provided mm -hmm. with a uh, very minimum uh, uh, latency. Sure. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, to tell, talk more about the processor, okay, this Intel processor can burst up to 2.58 gigahertz, and uh, the GPU support uh, dual-channel memory, so DDR3, you can install two of them up to 8 gigabytes, 
And now the processor also supports a hardware accelerated transcoding okay. up to 1080p. Okay, and uh, also HDMI output with up to 1080p. Sure. So this is the basic uh, hardware spec about that. So how can you utilize those uh, hardware capabilities, right? There are many ways to do it. Uh, here are just a few examples. Uh, you can stream the files and uh, with the uh, transcoding, real-time transcoding capability mm -hmm. to various players. Uh, for example, if you, have, if you have a smart TV with DLNA technology, and if you have an Apple TV, you have a Chromecast, Chromecast or Android TV, mm -hmm. you can all uh, stream the content from the NAS to the player easily. Yeah. Then you can also uh, install the Plex Media Server to stream to various uh, media players with uh, transcoding support. Mm -hmm. Now here I just show you uh, what kind of uh, clients the Plex Server supports. So uh, for example, uh, Roku, Chromecast, uh, Amazon Fire TV, all those, these different uh, players. Uh, and Plex also provide their Plex app for mm -hmm. your mobile phones and tablets. So it provides you a very organized and easy to use uh, user interface to get you uh, enjoy your media. Yeah, okay. Sure. Yeah. And uh, QNAB also has a, a app, a t HDMI output uh, app called Hybrid Desk Station HD Station. Yeah. So with that, you know, we install the USB keyboard and mouse, mm -hmm. and then through the HDMI output to a, a monitor or the TV, mm -hmm. then you can enjoy various uh, uh, TV the monitor yeah. optimized apps. Yeah, and you can apps. also mm -hmm. use our mobile app to come to make your cell phone into a controller mm -hmm. and how to turn on the HD station you just go to your control panel and in the applications and it's at the bottom of all the pages mm -hmm. all the all the options yeah. so you can just install your HD station and after you install the HD station what can you do on your you know like a uh, let's say a NAS PC mm -hmm. okay you can do all of this like the system tools, you can also use the HD station to turn on your QTS and then you can go into your file station and do everything just as the same as what you are doing in your, into your NAS. Yeah, yeah. And you can take it for a MBR mm -hmm. with our QBR Pro or our surveillance station. Mm -hmm. And you can also play your Skype or Facebook on the hybrid desk station and all of the other applications like the left hand side, the multimedia applications, some are from the third parties mm -hmm. and some are from our own QBKG. Check on the second, the Ocean KTV. You can also sing your karaoke in, in your own house. And the middle one is our photo, video, music station from QNAP. And of course, you can use like Chrome, Firefox, something browser, and office tools like that. So you can do a lot of things on your hybrid desk station through your NAS. Yeah, Just so yeah, so basically it turns your your dumb or stupid TV mm -hmm. into a smart TV, right? Of With course. our hybrid desk station, and when you course. have a NAS connected. And here I just explained uh, uh, what uh, Sam just mentioned, uh, when you install the, our various uh, station apps mm -hmm. for the hybrid desk station, then you can enjoy the same content and mm -hmm. uh, uh, features as our web-based uh, applications to play it on your TV. Yeah, mm -hmm. and since that is an x86 architecture NAS, so we can also transform your NAS into your Ubuntu computer. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy. You just have to uh, download our QBKG. What is that called? Uh, Linux Station. Yeah, Linux Station. Mm -hmm. And then you can install your Ubuntu onto the NAS and through the HDMI just directly output to a computer monitor. Mm -hmm. And two of the 2.0 USB port on the uh, red panel, you can connect your mouse and your keyboard to make your NAS another computer yeah. so it's it, very easy to use. like a mini computer ready yeah. made. And of course we can support other of the multimedia function like Kodi. You can install the Kodi on your Linux station and your Kodi will also grab the information from your NAS to give mm. you another uh, like user interface to, to check on all your music or TV or radio or, or etc. Yeah, this is through HDMI. Mm -hmm. So connect to the monitor, connect to the HDMI monitor to do that. Yeah, and that is the interface of the Kodi. Mm -hmm. So you can, of course, you need to install the video HD. Yeah, uh, uh, basically, QNAP, uh, we provide a, a plugin called uh, Video HD for Kodi. Mm -hmm. So if you, you know, Kodi has its own uh, user interface and its own database. So mm -hmm. we can, uh, uh, find and gather the data of your media. 
Uh, but uh, if you want to enjoy the same uh, media library as the Kingdom NAS, you know, from the four station video station and the uh, music station, then you can. Uh, this uh, one of the is a uh, video HD for Kodi. Then uh, once you install the plugin, then uh, Kodi can find the media library stored on the NAS and then use export that for you. You can enjoy the same uh, experience. Yeah, so we're done with our multimedia parts. Now we go into the machine. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at the front view. We have all the LED indicator for mm -hmm. your machine status, mm -hmm. main, USB, hard drives. And in the middle part, we add two of the M.2 SSD indicators so you can check the uh, status by the light. And of course, there are power button and a USB 3.0 with the touch copy button. Yes. And at the rear view, we have everything like mm -hmm. uh, 3.5 millimeter mm -hmm. uh, line out jack yeah. and HDMI for full HD and one of the uh, Giga LAN port mm -hmm. and two of the USB uh, two of the USB ports, right? right? And of course, the nine centimeter smart fan, smart fan will adjust itself by the heat inside of your NAS. Mm -hmm. And speaking of the heat, since we are a three uh, plus two hard, uh, three plus two drives of your uh, TS351, mm -hmm. here is the steps how we can install the M.2 very fast. Like there is a buckle or something you yeah. just you just put it on and insert your SSD, SSD. and lock the buckle up yes. and then uh, since we just talked about the heat mm -hmm. each of the TS351 you purchased will have two of the heat sink included mm -hmm. so if you have the heat concern you can also uh, put the uh, heat sink onto the M.2 so it will give you a very good performance mm -hmm. then for the 3.5 hard disk, first of all, that is a hard swappable uh, design. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you want to change your hard disk or you want to expand your hard disk capacity, you don't have to turn off your machine. You just go to control panel and then you go to the storage, uh, storage and snapshot mm -hmm. and you can just click to each of the pool and then there is a setting. You just click the setting and choose that you want to expand mm -hmm. your uh, pool, then you can like change the hard disk one by one mm -hmm. with our hot swappable design. design. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the hard disk tray, we also use the newest design, mm -hmm. which provides you a more convenient step to install all your hard disk. Yes. Yeah. Then let's take a quick look of how can we install the M.2 SSD and the RAM. Okay. So let's look at the, the TS-351 in mm -hmm. action. So uh, I have prepared a TS-351 here, mm -hmm. the brand new device. So let's take a look on the back. So to upgrade the uh, uh, memory and install the M.2 NVMe SSD, uh, it is very simple. See, there are three of the screws on the back. Mm -hmm. So with that, uh, you don't actually need a screwdriver. You can just use your existing coin around you. And then you can uh, use it to turn, turn, it, turn the screws loose. And then once you turn it loose, you can just use your uh, hand to remove, remove the screws one by one. So after you have uh, removed the screws, you can uh, just uh, easily take out the front the left cover. Okay. Once you have removed the cover, you want to put it this side. So here you will see the three hard drive trays, uh, hard swappable trays and uh, two of the M.2 SSD uh, slots here and then, uh, sorry, let me no, just here are one of the detector, right? Of yeah, the thermal detector thermal detector and here is another inside so uh -huh. it's very easy for you yeah, and then uh, here you will also see the memory slots mm -hmm. so one is pre-installed there and the second one is for you to upgrade the memory mm -hmm. and so to, uh, let me first show you the hard drives, okay? so uh, by default, you can uh, install the hard drive. You can simply just remove this uh, stand. Yeah, and then you can install the hard drives okay, mm -hmm. very easily without any uh, tool. And what if you want to uh, install the 2.5 inch hard drives of mm -hmm. SSDs? Uh, you can purchase the optional adapter. So once you install the optional adapter, adapter here, then you can easily install the 2.5 inch SSDs. So you can see that this is also a, a tool this installation. You just uh, simply uh, install this and then you will be there. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So that's about the uh, hard drive installation. So to install the M.2 SSDs and the memories, you will have to remove all, all the, the trays. trays. Once you have removed all the trays, then let's try to install the memory here. Okay. So here's the buckle we just mentioned. Right? Yeah, for SSD. Okay. No, so no, no, they, can, they can see that here. Okay. So we just um, we just take it out, mm -hmm. and then. So uh, as you can see here, we provide the two M.2 SSD heat sinks. So mm -hmm. you can apply that onto the controller of the SSD. And to install SSD is very easy. So just simply uh, make sure you have a right uh, direction of the pin. Okay, one is a short and one is a higher. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, just need the direction. Okay, once you push all the pin all the way down, then you wanna push the other end. Okay, lock. and then just uh, lock the lock yeah, the lock it. Okay, so now it's finished the SSD installation. Yes. Mm -hmm. So here is the buckle. Yes. So memory also the same. Just uh, put it. It's very easy to upgrade the memory. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I will skip that. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's go back. Mm -hmm. And after we see how to install the RAM and the SSD, mm -hmm. let's check on the SSD part. Yeah. Because uh, we have a new function called SSD over provisioning mm -hmm. that is in our latest version of QTS 4.3.5. Yes. So uh, we want to do a simple like introduction of what it is. Mm -hmm. If you have checked on the uh, streaming from repo, mm -hmm. you, you, you might have uh, an idea of what it is. But if you haven't, so we will do a quick uh, introduction. Mm -hmm. Well, basically we have several cases from our partners or basically our customers that they purchase some of the SSD and uh, at the first time they can enjoy the high speed of the SSD mm -hmm. but after several times they will re uh, feedback to us that the read time the read uh, speed of our SSD is getting really low so how can that happen that is a good SSD from big brain so we we help them for analysis the, this condition and we found that uh, there is one thing called over provisioning what is that that is okay for example if you purchase a 256 gigabyte of your SSD and when you insert that into your computer do the examination you will find that the real storage capacity is not as what 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 you think you purchased mm -hmm. there are sev several percentage lost what are that that is the over provisioning percentage why do they have to do that? Because check on the second part. When uh, uh, yeah, when your SSD is full and you want to keep writing something in, you will have to do the garbage collection. And when you are doing the garbage collection, it will uh, draw up uh, like drag your speed down. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's one thing called a uh, write amplifier mm -hmm. to SSDs, which means that. Uh, the concept of SSD and hard disk to do the override are different. Mm -hmm. So for SSD, you need to move the uh, original, like the old files into the over provisioning space. Mm -hmm. And then you can write the new uh, data file inside of your SSD. Mm -hmm. But if your over provisioning space is not big enough, it's like you want to move some furniture from your room into another room. So when another room is full, you will have to get another uh, extra space to put that thing into the extra space and then you can move the new furniture from th this room into that room. Mm -hmm. So when you don't have a big enough extra space, how can you move all your furniture from the old room into the extra space and move the new furniture from this room back here? Mm -hmm. So this is the concept of the SSD provisioning and th that is all because of the concept of hard disk and SSD they are having different design of the uh, data overwriting yeah so uh, over provisioning and our newly uh, newest uh, tool called uh, profiling tool mm -hmm. what can this tool help two things first we can stabilize the writing speed of your SSD 
through uh, the software defined over provisioning that you can adjust by yourself and you can run all the tests when you upgrade into our latest QTS version. And the second is we can release the uh, product original lifetime mm -hmm. because the uh, write amplifier is like this. When I want to write a new data inside of my SSD, but I have to move the old data through garbage collection mm -hmm. or move to the over provisioning. When the over provisioning space is not enough, I will have to move all the data back and forth, back and mm -hmm. forth. So each of the move will count one. So if your SSD was designed to be moved like a million times, and just because you want to write a new data file inside of your full SSD and you have to do another extra several moves, so this will lower the uh, product lifetime to your SSD. So when you are having a big enough over, over provisioning space, you can easily move the old thing into the over provisioning space and delete that, and then you can just easily in, uh, like put new things inside of your SSD, mm -hmm. which we can lower the write amplifier uh, quantity to your SSD. So that is how we can release the original uh, life, uh, product lifetime to your SSD. Mm -hmm. So it's very easy to use and you can also run the test by yourself in our over provisioning profiling tools. Mm -hmm. You can check like uh, our, our uh, default setting is like 10%, mm -hmm. but you can set by yourself from 10% into 60%. Depends on your uh, workflow and your demand to how you want to make your SSD work. So uh, if you are still having your SSD on hand, you don't have to throw that away and purchase a new one. You just have to choose our QNAP Plus and run our, Q, uh, run our SSD profiling tools and find a uh, best like golden cross to your own uh, SSD just like what we have shown on the picture from 0% to 60% and you can also test the, 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 you know, the read and write on your own SSD but it will take several times and when it's done you can choose the best percentage of what you want to choose uh, you want to set your over provisioning so because uh, TS351 has uh, two of the SE slots, so mm -hmm. these these advanced SE features becomes very important for the TS351. Mm -hmm. you know? So that means, uh, just like uh, Sam said, uh, uh, you can use those affordable SSDs you know, to accelerate your TS351 performance, while also uh, by reserving more uh, over provisioning area, you can keep the SSD running uh, longer and also performs better in a long time. Yeah, yes. sure. So with the SD cache, uh, we provide uh, several different uh, features. Mm -hmm. So you can set up as a global SD cache for your overall performance boost, or you mm -hmm. can set up for a particular uh, area. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now uh, with the uh, QNAP uh, global SD cache, we have uh, several uh, uh, options you can set up. For example, such as uh, read only uh, for the uh, copy of frequently copy uh, data to enhance performance mm -hmm. and then for the rewrite so with rewrite itself as a red one you know yeah. for the safety reason mm -hmm. but uh, it can accelerate your uh, both read and write performance mm -hmm. and now a uh, brand new one is uh, write only so this is can accelerate your write performance and then this is a, a slide about uh, the write only cache to increase your overall SAD return on investment uh, by combining with uh, all your other SSD um, drives yeah. in the system. Yes. Mm -hmm. So here is the chart we can provide you for your reference. If mm -hmm. you just want to use your NAS as a file server, you can choose 10%. If you want to do like surveillance, backup or log server, mm -hmm. you can choose 30%. And of course, if you have a bigger requirement or demand, you can choose like higher percentage. So yes. it's all by yourself. Mm -hmm. So after we done the new thing over provisioning, let's talk about the most basic thing, the data backup, mm -hmm. because as we are a NAS manufacturer, yes. we take very great importance on protecting your data file. Mm -hmm. So if you're a Mac OS user, of course you can use your time machine and pick up all the data files onto our NAS. Mm -hmm. And if you're a Windows user, you can download the NetBack replicator on our website and do the backup and send the backup to our NAS. Yes. So that's the first protection. Mm -hmm. And the second protection is the snapshot. For the TS351, you can have up to 256 of the snapshot to your whole NAS. 
So uh, I will personally recommend you to upgrade your uh, memory into four gigabyte mm -hmm. at the, as the minimum mm -hmm. because see two two gigabyte and four gigabyte the the, the snapshot quantity is a yeah. four times like the protection yeah. yeah. <laughs> And not only that, you can also use our new hybrid backup sync. Uh, now we can provide you to, uh, like you can back up to your local device, mm -hmm. like your DAS, and then you can uh, back up to a, another remote NAS, mm -hmm. and then the recover uh, method, we have also upgraded. Yes. So you can check on our new video for hybrid backup sync with mm -hmm. Norman. And of course, if you are a cloud storage user, we are now expanding more and more third-party cloud company with us. So uh, uh, you can choose like files, file type or buckle type. Mm -hmm. Now we can all support. So uh, you can go upstairs, uh, sorry, you can go up line, online and check if your cloud service are supported by QNET now. Yeah. yeah. And here's another thing, since the TS351 is an x86 architecture, mm -hmm. it can support the VJ bot. So uh, uh, you just have to, and of course the surveillance system. Mm -hmm. So now we have already support more than 6,000 of the IP cameras in the market. And for each of the TS351 you purchase, you will get another free extra, uh, eight extra free IP camera channels. Mm -hmm. And this is the user interface of our QVR center client. And if you don't have an IP camera, but you want to try this function, and you just happen to have another USB camera on your hand, you can also try to download our USB Cam 2, the QUSB Cam 2 in our app center, and you can turn your USB camera into another IP camera. And for our latest version of our Q QVR Pro, we can now support the server motion. So even if your IP camera or your USB camera doesn't support the uh, motion detection function, you can all set that on our QVR Pro client and uh, you will also enjoy the motion detect detection function. That is how we can turn our NAS into a better MVR than mm -hmm. a normal NAS. And since that is a x86 architecture, we can support the VJBot function. We can turn other NAS's storage space through iSCSI into your own storage space. Yeah. And it's very easy, it's in your control panel and storage and snapshot. And you can just go to the iSCSI part and create another VJ bot. So, so it's through your network. Yeah, yeah. You use a network to expand your NAS capacity. Yeah, and mm -hmm. you can have eight as a maximum quantity mm -hmm. for your VJ bot expanded. Yeah. So let's make a simple recap. What can I have when I purchase a TS351? Maybe. First, <laughs> yeah, like this vibe. That is a home entertainment and Linux station since it can support the virtual machine. So you can use the HD station for your whole multimedia requirements and mm -hmm. demands. And we can turn your NAS into another PC like a Linux station. Mm -hmm. And since it does support the HDMI output and hardware transcoding for full HD 180p, mm -hmm. so you can use it to check all your videos or your movies that yeah. through no matter is Chromecast or mm -hmm. DLNA or anything else. Mm -hmm. And since that is a three-bay NAS, but it has two extra M.2 SSD slot, that means that you can just purchase that for now as your RAID 5 machine. Mm -hmm. And when you have higher requirements of the reading writing speed or the storage space requirement, you can purchase another M.2 SSD. So just save it for the future, you know. Yeah. And of course, we are a NAS manufacturer. We do our best to provide you the data security. We have 256 snapshot. We can support time machine and a NetBat replicator backup. And of course, we support the cloud backup through our hybrid backup sync. Mm. So that is all we want to provide to you to, through our TS351. And uh, when can we see that on the market? Yeah, you, sh you should be able to see this week in uh, most of the uh, major markets. Mm -hmm. So be sure to check out uh, our website and your own language and also the online shop. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's go back to life. We hope you liked the video today and uh, you might find that we have been disappeared for over one week. That is because we were in Shanghai for the Expo, mm -hmm. uh, Automation Expo, right, I think. So we have found a lot of new things that will make our life more easier and convenient. We have Samsung, we have uh, WD, 
and we have a lot of new IoT thing and AI thing. So if you want to know something about the uh, Expo in Shanghai, you can go to our YouTube channel and search for 2018 um, Shanghai Expo, I think. <laughs> yeah, or you can just check our latest videos. We have more than 10 videos that you may find interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, if you like our video, don't forget to subscribe our channel and uh, go to live.qnap.com to check every of our new videos. Thank you, Jason, to okay. come to show okay. us the TS351. Mm -hmm. We will see you next time on QNAP Live Broadcast. Bye. Bye.